Welcome into this Pod Sanity edition of the podcast. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Thanks for downloading tonight's show. So we finally figure it out. We've got Group 1, 2, and 3 in Conference USA all settled. The Thundering Herd gets the win on Saturday night to stay in Group 2. So they're locked now from anywhere from a 6 seed to a 10 seed, depending on how bonus play fans out. Now here are the groups. Group 1 will be Old Dominion at 1, Western Kentucky at 2, Southern Miss at 3, UTSA at 4, and UAB at 5. Group 2, North Texas is 6, Marshall 7, Florida Atlantic at 8, FIU at 9, Louisiana Tech at 10. Now Group 3 battling for a spot in the Conference USA Tournament. Rice is 11, Middle Tennessee is 12, UTEP is 13th, and Charlotte is 14th. Now, where will the Thundering Herd play? When will the Thundering Herd play? I can tell you this. Don't have times just yet for Marshall and their four games, but there are five possible dates for group play. Marshall will not play until February 28th. Here's what the schedule looks like. Bonus play on Saturday, February 23rd. Western Kentucky at Old Dominion. It'll be UAB at Southern Miss. FIU at FAU, North Texas at Louisiana Tech, Charlotte at Middle Tennessee, then Rice at UTEP. Now, where will the Thundering Herd play? Well, they're going to play their first game on the road. They will have to go to Louisiana Tech. The Thursday, February 28th schedule is Old Dominion at UTSA, Western Kentucky at UAB, Florida Atlantic at North Texas, and Marshall at Louisiana Tech. Then the Sunday, March 3rd grouping, Marshall will also play on that day, features Southern Miss at Western Kentucky, UAB at UTSA, Marshall at North Texas, then Louisiana Tech at FIU, UTEP at Charlotte, Middle Tennessee at Rice. The Thundering Herd returns to the Cam Henderson Center, and they'll play on Wednesday, March 6th. They'll be in a group that consists of Southern Miss at Old Dominion, UTSA at Western Kentucky, Louisiana Tech at Florida Atlantic, FIU at Marshall, Rice at Charlotte, Middle Tennessee at UTEP. And then Saturday, March 9th, that'll be the final regular season game for the Thundering Herd. They'll be in the group along with Old Dominion at UAB, UTSA at Southern Miss, Florida Atlantic, they take on Marshall, North Texas at FIU, Charlotte at Rice, UTEP at Middle Tennessee. So that's what the groupings look like, and that's what pod play looks like. Now, Thundering Herd, four games, two on the road, two at home. They won't play for a week and a half. That's pod play. And to recap, Marshall will be in pod play starting on February 28th. That's a Thursday. They'll take on Louisiana Tech on the road. Then they travel to the Super Pit to take on North Texas on Sunday, March 3rd. Back home at the Cam Henderson Center on Wednesday, March 6th to play host to FIU. And then on Saturday, March 9th, they'll play host to FAU. And that's what pod play looks like for the Thundering Herd. I've got a lot to get into as Marshall defeated Middle Tennessee early Saturday afternoon, 98-93. to In that game, the Thundering Herd shot 27-56 for 48.2%. They were 11-27 of from the three-point line. That's good enough for 40.7%. 33-40. of That's amazing from the free throw line. Now, let me temper that. 26-32 of in the second half. Middle Tennessee was fouling a lot late trying to at least chip away at the Thundering Herd's lead, hoping that the Thundering Herd would miss a few shots. They sent John Elmore to the line late. He was 11 of 11 in that contest, a lot of those coming in the last few minutes. So the Thundering Herd gets the victory. Here's what the hustle points look like. Marshall got outscored in the paint 30-40, to 40, but that's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. Marshall, they did win the battle of turnovers 21-17, lost the second chance point battle. Marshall only had 13. Middle Tennessee had 34. Fast break points 8-2 to two in favor of the Thundering Herd. And bench scoring, Marshall got 30. Middle Tennessee got 11. Dan D'Antoni, a very happy, victorious coach. Felt good. He hasn't won in a while. Here's what Dan D'Antoni said after the contest. Well, it was just good to get a win. I thought we played with the heart and the passion we've been missing for a while. Uh, 55 for them is 
terrific. Thought we did a much better job second half. We put Jared West on him, just dogged him. And uh, I think he made one really, really nice shot. But other than that, uh, I thought uh, Jared did a, a real nice job. CJ was strong, and we've been missing that. John was really strong at the end. So uh, good game. Uh, God, I get to smile at, at, at night tonight. So good game for the herd, great for the herd. And then there'll be a lot of herd fans that get to sleep too. And I appreciate them staying awake during the bad times, but they can go to sleep tonight. It was a good time. So looks good. We just got to keep going. How, how tough is it to playing a game, coaching a game that's so dominated by fouls? There was 50 fouls. You're trying to set me there up. Was, you know, I'm having a good was, night. They'll end up, they ain't going to find me if I say what <laughs> it was, is. There was 50 fouls called in this game. Yeah, I know. That's all I can say. <laughs> it is what it is. You got to play with what it is. Good question. Impossible to answer. I was, one, I was a bad student in school. I mean, the hard questions, I flunked. Were you a good foul shooter? Huh? Were you a good foul shooter? I was a pretty good foul shooter there. I could beat you. I know that. <laughs> well, that's no contest. I know that. That's it. Hey, I don't bet unless I know I'm going to win. <laughs> that, uh, big, big lift from Darius. Yeah, a uh, big lift. And, and you know, uh, you know he, his eyes have brightened up in the last month. And uh, it's kind of what we expected from him all along. Just sometimes uh, life treats you a little unfairly. And, you got to get back up, and I think he's gotten back up, and he's uh, doing a real nice job, and uh, he, he can be the difference. Yeah. He and John and CJ uh, just making that constant play from your seniors, help with everybody else, and you got a, a real good chance. What uh, what was your reasoning for starting him tonight? I, well, I think you figure out how we lost seven out of eight. You got to do something. So, uh, you know what, I, we just need to be a little bigger. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I put him in. I mean, we, I've asked Rondell and Tavian, a point guard, to do yeoman's duty by being bigs, playing big. And that's hard to go. You know, you can go in spurts, but when you have to go for a long period of times like that, it's, it gets tough. So, yeah. you know what, uh, George has been uh, looking better at practice. Uh, he's, you know, I told him, I said, I'm going to put the keys on the, and this is kind of uh, uh, just, uh, oh, shit, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, but anyway, it's just, I'm using it as a, God, I know metaphor. you know. Huh? Metaphor. Is it a metaphor or a? Uh, Similar. Huh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I got to go to Harvard and ask those people. But, uh, uh <laughs> now, it could be a metaphor, but I, I think that's the wrong word. But uh, uh, he he needed to do more on his own. And I was trying to encourage him. I use the keys at the end of the ta desk, and that's what I told my kids. I go, now I'm going to put the keys at the end of the desk. I'm never going to make you go to the gym. Now, you have to want to do that. you got to want it. All i got to do is make it where it's available for you. So you know what he's Come a little bit earlier, he's working a little bit more. And that means a lot. Uh, you'd be surprised how fast your games come, especially he's talented, will come. On the flip side of that move, it, you know, you look and, and Darius uh, has a hustle play on the first possession that, that leads to a, a fourth shot and the first person up off the bench cheering him on is Tavio. And that, that could be a tough situation for a freshman, but it seemed like he handled it. Well, you know what I've, I've told you all along uh, from the very beginning when you asked me about Tavian, I always have told you first and foremost, you know, I saw he could jump. I saw how athletic he was. <coughs> what surprised me the most, foremost, is what a great human being he is. And uh, he, he doesn't disappoint you every time he gets in that situation. He shines by, by being a human being. And uh, he's, I, I guess you think his mother or dad or, you know, I don't know where he gets it from, but uh, you know, you wish that all of us, all of us were the type of young man he is and young lady in that case. Uh, look ahead to this pod place. Don't know anything about the pod. That, what are your thoughts on the I don't the know. I, I don't know. You know, 
I'm not one, you know, I, I'm kind of a change artist myself. And if you're going to be a change artist or you're going to make things change, you can't predict outcomes or decide they're going to be failures or winners before you do it, or you never do it. You know, so there's no total guarantee about anything. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. Everybody's in the same boat, you know, so it is what it is. And then after it's all done, evaluate it and see if we need to go forward with it or that'll be it. You do get a week off. That, that might be a good thing. Yeah, for me. I need about three days, man. I'm tired of John talking to me. And I tell you what, I got to see him every damn day. After a while, you just go, sheesh, I need a break. But, uh, no, I, uh, you know, it's good for the kids. I, I, like I said, we've had a long season. Started Bahamas. Uh, John and CJ were active in the summertime going everywhere. It's a long season, so one or two, maybe even three days won't hurt. We'll see. I haven't decided whether it be Tuesday or Wednesday. We'll see. We play Saturday, right? Uh, could be. That could yeah. be a bye. I know the schedule tonight yeah. did about nine. Well, if it's Saturday, that'd give us three days to prepare. If we took off Tuesday. You know, I can let them come in and shoot on their own or something like that, and then we can pick it up heavy on Wednesday. I'm leaning that way. Could change tonight. Also, some great performances from Jansen Williams, who had 16 points. C.J. Burks had 20. Darius George had 11. John Elmore had 19. Tavion Kenzie had 13. Rondell Watson had 17. Jared West had two points. But you know what? That's not Jared's job. Jared's job is to harass other players, as you heard Dan D'Antoni talk about a few minutes ago in the earlier segment. So after the game, Media had a chance to catch up with John Elmore, C.J. Burks, Rondell Watson. John's just happy to get a win again. Uh, I can't tell you the last time we've won a game, man. It's been frustrating. It's been a long road, but uh, we're getting better. Um, guys are fighting, competing. We played 40 minutes tonight, and that's what it's going to take every game. Uh, middle doesn't have the best record, but they play hard. They run some good stuff, so it was a tough game. But we fought. We're getting better, so uh, stick with us. What? What kind of adjustments, how tough is it to play in a game that's so dominated by fouls? There was 50 fouls called to them in this game. I mean, I liked it because I was getting to the free throw line a little bit. <laughs> yeah, <maybe. laughs> um, we've got good shooters, so uh, if, if you call the game tight, which we like, uh, we shoot a lot of free throws. We've got good free throw shooters, uh, and that's, that's the way we play. We don't have the biggest bodies. We're not the most athletic. so. Guys are kind of fouling, riding you on the dribble, stuff like that. And the refs do a good job like they did. Uh, I mean, puts us at an advantage, in my opinion, because that's how we play. We're more of a finesse team than a power team. So when teams ride us and stuff like that, it's hard to play when you're getting grabbed and stuff. So I thought they did a good job, um, and it was to our benefit. CJ, you want to do anything on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's as for how we play. When you foul us like that, we go up here and step up and knock them down. And, uh, I didn't know we shot 40 of them, but we made 33, so can't complain about that. It doesn't do anything to mess up the tempo for you guys, anything like that? No, not at all. I know we probably fouled a little too much. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a couple tic-tac fouls we got uh, on layups, on rebounds, stuff like that, where we got to box out, be a little more aggressive and finish the play. But uh, if we can cut down on ours and keep shooting that many free throws, I think we'll be all right. How much of a concerted effort did you all make yesterday to pick up the defensive energy first and foremost in practice leading into this one? It seemed like there was a, just a different defensive feel to this game for you all. Yeah, uh, coming in tonight, there was just, or this afternoon, there was just a different vibe around uh, the team. Uh, it felt kind of like earlier in the year, uh, even last year of some sorts. Uh, just how locked in everybody was, how focused we were in the warm up, um, everybody was prepared from the jump. We had a couple letdowns here and there, but not as many as we've been having. So just the defensive focus and intensity, like you said, was a lot better tonight. Uh, and going forward, we need to keep improving if we want to get back to where we were last year. Uh, that's still our goal. Uh, everybody's kind of seen us take some lumps and some bumps and bruises so far these past few weeks. But our best basketball is still ahead of us. I'm, I still believe that. These guys still believe that. So we're going to keep working, go back to the drawing board, and prepare for the next one. 
To have Darius come out early and, and set a defensive tone, knowing that he was in the starting lineup today, what, what does that do for y'all? Y'all seen him sort of, you know, go through the ringer over the last couple months, and and to see him come on strong and, and sort of <coughs> kind of watch y'all today. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I love Darius. I love the way he plays. Uh, and he brought energy tonight. I thought he brought that extra effort that we need been needing, extra boost. Uh, and I thought, you know, I thought everyone did good from down the line from one through 15, one through however many played. Everybody contributed, and uh, that's what it takes to, to win. Rondell, for you, sort of piggybacking off what Chuck was talking about earlier with the foul situation. All three of you guys are, are veteran guys, senior guys. You know, what? Do you all sense that in the middle of a game? You had two back-to-back -back mm -hmm. three-point plays because you could sense how the game's getting called in, and you sort of try to exploit that a little bit. Uh, yeah, I think uh, you just got to be aggressive during them uh, in moments. I think us three up here, we know when to uh, be aggressive, when not to. And uh, I think you can feel that. <coughs> you can feel like how the referees are calling the game, and when it's like that, you just got to attack and just be aggressive and get up to the line. Uh, for seniors, you got to knock them down. CJ, kind of on the same note for you, only. Four three-point attempts. Did you kind of know getting to the basket was maybe the best way to go and try to score? Uh, yeah, a little bit. We know as the game progressed, I seen that they was calling the game pretty tight. So you know when the game's getting called like that, you kind of want to be a little bit more aggressive. You know, going to the basket and trying to get in the lane and create things that open up for others. John, you think? Did you look at the bench, the bench points category? Uh, I did. Is this um, the first? Is this the first time this season that you you've led in bench points? I think so, actually. Uh, I mean, like Rondell said, we got contributions from everybody. Uh, you look look at the scoring, 16, 11, 20, 19, 13, 17. Uh, when we get guys contributing every night, and went through however many guys play, uh, when you come in with the energy, you run our system, you believe in yourself and believe in what we're trying to do as a team, uh, I think we're as good as anybody in the country. Uh, it's not, I'm going to stick to that. Six double-figure scores. I don't know if we've done that all year, have we? We have, we've not. So uh, anytime we have guys focused and locked in like that, um, coach puts us in advantageous situations. Uh, everybody moves the ball, shares the ball, and we all reap the benefit of each other's success. So we don't care who scores, we don't care who assists. Uh, we just want to win. So at the end of the day, it was a great win, and hopefully we can keep rolling. John, you look up with about five, I think it was 5.15 or so to go. It's a one-point game, and you've got four at that point. What, you know? It seemed like whenever the team needed a big shot, you, you still stepped up and, and took it and knocked it down. Did, how did that get you in a flow after a game in which it seemed kind of tough for you to get into it early? Uh, I was just playing my game. Uh, they seemed like they were trying to stop me, hedging hard on the screen, stuff like that. Uh, I didn't want to force too many shots. Uh, CJ had a hot hand. Rondell had a hot hand. So my job as point guard and one of the leaders on this team is to try to put guys in good situations and let them make plays. Uh, they're heck of players, fifth-year seniors. Uh, we've been... We've been through it all together, and we're going to keep fighting. So uh, I believe in these guys. Sometimes I make the extra pass when I could shoot it, but uh, I trust them. And at the end of the day, they got to trust me. I got to trust them if we're going to be successful. So I believe in them, and uh, we're just going to keep fighting. How important were the contributions spread across the board? Simply, it seemed like Thursday night you all were, were kind of pressing a little bit, trying to make the perfect play and stuff like that. So to get everybody into a flow, is this the type of game you all needed? I think we were more relaxed. But at the same time, we were more uh, focused. Uh, we threw a couple bad passes last game. I know we had a lot of turnovers. Uh, I think we hopefully we cut down on that a little bit. And uh, so we valued the ball a little bit more. Uh, we still we take a lot of high risk plays, throwing lobs, back doors, stuff like that, skip passes. A lot of coaches wouldn't do, but Coach D'Antoni believes in us. That's what we practice every day. So we're just sticking to the script and uh, just got to believe in what we do. All right, once again, that was John Elmore, Rondell Watson, and C.J. Burke. Six players for the Thundering Herd in double-digit scoring. That was a great performance by Marshall. Lots of points. Maybe not enough defense, but still lots of points. Everybody goes home happy. And Marshall, they're in Group 2. They're seeded 7th right now, trying to improve their seed to hopefully 6th place in the Conference USA standings. That's going to do it for this edition of the podcast. Hey, thanks for listening, and do me a favor. If you would, please follow us on Apple Podcasts by subscribing. Leave me a five-star review. If you could also leave me a great written review, tell people why you like the show, I would appreciate that. Also, send me feedback on Twitter. What more do you want to hear from these type of podcasts? This is sort of a bonus episode, not my regular radio show, so I'm throwing this together on the fly. Kind of want to get an idea of what you like 
what you want to hear more of, what more I can do to make you really excited about these extra bonus podcasts. So if you could do all that for me, I really would appreciate it. Again, you can find me on Twitter at Paul Swan. Another great place to find me, The Drive with Paul Swan on Facebook. That's going to do it for the podcast. Thanks for listening, and we'll find out what the Thundering Herd's time schedule looks like on Sunday. You know what? You might see another bonus podcast. Thanks for subscribing. Thank you.